Hello folks, Junkie Rock 13, everything vaping related, it's Junkie Rock 13. Uh, my name is Ross Sanders, and today I'm bringing you another review on the Phoenix Clone Rebuildable Atomizer. Now there are Phoenix, um, it's pretty much the same design, one may have like a flat top or a slanted top but they're pretty much the same design. Now this is the Phoenix clone. It is not the actual Phoenix. This was purchased in a co-op uh, wholesale from China and um, I'm rather digging it. It's not a bad little dripping atomizer. If you're into dripping, in my opinion, this is the way to go. We're gonna take a look at this today and I have a nice little contest giveaway for you guys again. And I want to thank everybody for subscribing and entering the contest. Um, I like doing these contests. It gives, gives me the opportunity to give back to the community a little bit. And I like people watching my videos and, you know, seeing if I have any tips or tricks that may help you out with your vaping needs. So let's take a look at the Phoenix clone and um, talk about it a little bit. And we'll talk about that contest. Alrighty, so here is the Phoenix, nice and close up. Okay, it is supposed to be made out of stainless steel, but I think it is more of a brass. If you notice inside right there, I sanded out the uh, drip tip hole just a little bit because it was getting, it was too tight for some of my 510 drip tips. So I took a little sandpaper and sanded it out a little bit. So it looks like there's a brass base in there okay but um it's all metal it has an air hole if i can focus it if i find the air hole okay the air hole's right there okay come on but the air hole is rather small and um, this one is not modified but i have modified another one uh, to get more air movement and it seems to be working a lot better so if you are going to drill out that hole I suggest a sixteenth of an inch drill bit and just drill out that hole a little bit so it is a 510 drip to connection it is a 510 uh, connection down here also a little knurled section you'll be holding this and this comes apart right there okay now this is not um, there is no coil and wick in there I took the wick and coil out to show you how to put it together now it does come excuse me <clears throat> it does come ready from the factory or from the vendor uh, to vape just drop some juice in there and you're ready to go um, the coil that it comes with I prefer doing my own I didn't like the flavor it gave, but it is ready to go, but um, I tend to like to do my own coils and on wicks myself. So what I'm going to do is show you how I do it, okay? Put that off to the side. Oh, let me show one thing before I get any further. <coughs> Excuse me. People are having issues straight out of the box with these firing sometimes. What I have noticed it that the positive post in the center here is pushed in a little bit now these get pushed in very easy and if you notice when I do that the positive post over here moves up right here so if you want to just push down on this a little bit this post will come right out or if you want to take like a little flathead screwdriver that you find in the eyeglass kits and just stick it in between your negative and your positive there and just pry it out a little bit 
not just not a lot, just a little bit to lift it up. <coughs> but that should fix that issue. So let me show you how to wrap the wick on this. I have a little two and a half inch piece of three millimeter silica wick and a piece a couple inch um, 32 gauge canthal A1 canthal excuse me so what I'm gonna do is find the center of this approximately leave a good inch of the canthal and I'm just gonna pinch that together right there okay in the center hold it there and basically I know some people have been putting pins in there or little paper clips and you could do that I find it's easy just to uh, take it and just start wrapping it around the silica now depending on how many turns you go around the silica will determine the ohms of your atomizer um, now just keep on turning I'm gonna do like around four turns or four wraps what I got going on here. Let me go one more time. Okay, come on, focus. Okay, I hope you see that. All right. Um, now you don't have to be perfect and getting them evenly spaced but it's nice to have it nice and evenly spaced there so then what I'm going to take now you're going to have one longer depending on how your long your wire is you usually end up with one longer and that's kind of good um, because we're going to be putting them in little holes that are on the phoenix and um, you're not going to be putting them in at the same time so what I'm going to do here is I want to put the wick in the center of these screws like this okay so what I am going to do is when both of the wires are coming down the same side I can't do that the way I want to do it so I'm gonna need one going one way and one going the other and I'll show you right now why that is so okay well what I'm gonna take is the one wire and I'm gonna put it through the one little hole on this side sorry I can't see the hole I know there's gonna be a lot of jokes about that okay so once you get the hole or once you get the wire through the hole there um, let me just grab my screwdriver pry it up so I can pull out the other end and just pull it through the other side there then I'm gonna take my wick and put it across the two posts there okay you see what I'm doing here okay now I'm just gonna pull that over and take the other side wire and put it in that hole there and hopefully it'll come out the other end here come on okay All right, let me pull that screw out. Maybe I have it down a little bit too far. Wow. This really isn't that hard. I just can't see over the camera. <laughs> okay, so I got it. And then I'm just going to pull it through. Okay. Pull this one tight over here and pull this one tight over here. Okay, why? Oh, I got a little knot in it. Perfect. Oh, 
okay. All right. Great working behind the camera. I thought it was going to be better, but it's not. <laughs> okay. So now I have one going through on one end and one going through on the other way. So it's perfectly centered there. Now you don't have to do it this way. I've done it on either side and it works just as good. So now that I have that, I'm just going to take my little Phillips head screwdriver and tighten these down. Oh, beautiful. Beating up the wick even before I vape on it. Okay, here we go again. Now just tighten this up. Tighten up the other one. Okay. And just wiggle off the ends. And it'll come off nice and flush. Okay. So now what you have here is a wick that is ready to be vaped, but you have these two ends here. Now what I like to do is take my scissors and just trim these off just a little bit here because I'm actually going to feed them down into the sides here. Now they come, a lot of people loosen them up and, un and fray them out. That's fine, you could do that also. But what I like to do is just take a screwdriver and just kind of stuff them in. side okay you're gonna fight with me aren't you this really is an easy process but it seems like I am having a hard time doing it behind the camera now it does look a little messy okay but that's okay because you're you're really more concerned about the the area where the coils are. Now what I like to do is just clean this up and make sure they're away from the coils. If there's any hanging out there you can trim it off. Now I know people are going to say, oh my god, that thing is a disaster. But if you can notice, if you can see in there, the coil is nice and it's in the center and all that um, loose ends there are down in there. It's going to soak up the juice and wick it up to the top. Let me show you how um, this vapes. Let me put the top on. And then I'll show you how I put the juice in there. And we'll see how it works. We'll see what the ohms are. Let's go back over to the other can. Okay, so there you have it. There's how I make the wick for the Phoenix. Now, I know some people like keeping the ends short. In my experience with the Phoenix, I like keeping them a little bit longer there and when they fray out like that and push down into the cup under there, I've been getting better wicking. Um, you can trim them off and just keep them nice and short, but for me, when it's all frayed out like that, I like them like that. Um, let me, before I put this on the Proveri to test the ohms, I don't want it to burn out. Or to do a dry burn, excuse me. So I'm just going to take some juice. This is just some uh, vanilla 70 30 18 milligram juice. So there's not a lot of VG in here, 70% PG. I'm going to show you how many drops I put in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 
Wow, that's a lot of juice. <laughs> Normal atomizers don't take 15 drops of juice. So what we're going to do, I'll put a little drip tip on here. Okay, now on the Proveri, I am going to test the ohms on there. Okay, let me see if I can get you to read that. It says 2.0. 2.0. Hope you can see that. I know the contrast is bad. So let me raise up this. And the Proveri to right around, I'm gonna put it at four volts. Let's see what that works like. All right, let's give it a try. Decent vapor. Oh, there we go. It's breaking in a little bit. Vapor better. Flavor's great. No dry hits. Wicking great. Um, I like it. Let me see if I can see if you can see what it looks like in there now. I might not be able to see this. You can see the vapor coming right off of there. Very nice. Now, I'm going to show you how this is because a lot of people don't own Pavaris. So I'm going to show you on a regular Ego battery. But you got to remember, you can change the ohms on this. You can make it lower ohms. You can bring it down to a one ohm car, um, atomizer if you wanted to. This is at two, and it's on a regular Ego 1100 battery. If it's not dead. Here's the issue that I was talking about. I'm so happy this happened on cam. Right now, sometimes with the Bravari going to the Ego or going to a different device, the positive connector on these devices gets pushed in really easy. So if you take a little flat head and just pull out the positive connector there, and I'll put it on the ego. Mm -hmm. So it works on the ego fine. And I have a nice little collar right there, so it looks pretty good. And if you have the stainless steel, it looks even nicer. So that's the Phoenix Atomizer. Um, I am not a dripper. I normally don't drip, but when I am dripping, I like using these rebuildables. Um, let me put it this way. These are nice if you like atomizers. They are the last atomizer you'll ever buy because you can rebuild it yourself, maybe, um, but you can change the ohms in it. Uh, by wrapping more or wrapping less. If you wrap like three wraps around it, you get like a 1.5, depending on the gauge of the wire, um, the length of the wire you're using. Uh, that's just my method of how I do it. I usually do around three to four wraps and get anywhere between 1.5 ohms up to two, 2.1. Works pretty nice. I like the Phoenix. It's not a bad investment, and some vendors are selling these rather cheap. Uh, like I said, I picked this up from the uh, co op, so it was rather inexpensive. So that's what I have for the Phoenix. Let me get to the little contest that I have um, because I'm showing you the Phoenix. It is the Phoenix Atomizer. 
Okay, let me just take it out of my little goodie bag here. Here it is, a brand new Phoenix Atomizer, still in the package. Okay, now that's going to be ready to go. Um, you will not have to wrap the coil yourself or wrap the wick yourself. It's all ready to go. If you don't like the way that tastes, I suggest maybe when you first get it, putting in 10 to 15 drops of juice. Some people have been putting in five drops and getting really burnt flavors. So put in 10 to 15 drops, get that wick nice and wet, and it, it works pretty good. It comes with a little, they're supposed to be stainless steel tips, um, drip tips, but I'm not sure if it's stainless steel. But this is what I got with it. It's a little Ming one. And I'm throwing in a nice little 18 inch piece of three millimeter silica and a couple feet of 32 gauge canthal to get you started with the Phoenix. So how to enter the contest, just like always, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and comment on this video if you do not comment on this video I'm not going to enter you into the contest and if you win the contest and you are not subscribed um, I will not ship the prize to you and I will have to draw again so the Phoenix Atomizer contest make sure you enter um, it's free <laughs> what, what more can you ask um, this is Junkie Rock 13 thanks everybody for watching keep vaping and check me out on Elixir TV on Saturday from 8 to 10 Eastern. That's ElixirTV.com. Junkie Rock 13. Take care, everybody. Vape on.